a tractor curves and we'll be using a tractor curves to create an, an urban er environment which is designed by or which is which design is driven by the attractor curves such as rotations extrusions and sizes and etc so as you see this is my rhino and crossover screen why don't we create our grid system which we use uh, by using a different component this time let's create an xyz point and let's grab an array component rectangular array and array component is under transform and under array can have it here so it has a couple of inputs the one is the first one is the geometry the second one is the cell the cell is the very similar um, thing that we saw in the in our grid systems like if I grab a rectangular grid rectangular you see we have x size and once y size that's our like basic system to be grid go in both directions this time it asks for a cell let's grab the cell by drawing a rectangle in rhino or you can do it in crossover as well let's do it in rhino and let's say 20 meters by 10 meters and let's put this guy as our curve and this is going to be my cell and now what we see is it's basically created this system over here and obviously if you if you like scale this let's say by two we have things going up and down or you can play you can play around with it x count is six y count is three so why don't we have like x count 10 y count five okay and even if you want you can just really increase this but that's for that's okay for now and then what i'll be doing is basically i'll be grouping this guys so now this is my group and then i'll pull out a scribble and type grid so this is my grid system and on this grid system what i obviously need is at this to what I obviously need is rectangles, right? So if I grab a rectangle component, and if I pull this geometry in, it's, it creates this like X and Y, minus one, two, minus two to two, minus one to one. So what I can do here is I can grab a domain. Actually, I can grab double domains and I can pull a negative component here and negative here. But obviously, if you want to work with a square, you don't need X, Y size different. Or you can use only X size as well. And what I can do here is let's put like minus 10. Oops, sorry. Something between minus 10 to 10. And minus 10 is going to be our start. And 10 is going to be our end. So you see. This is the rectangle in which we are. Okay, what is happening here? It's 10 to 10. Is it too large or what? So it's basically 10 to 10. This is 10 to 10. How does this? Oh, because I put minus 10 here. That's the problem. So yeah, this is something I wanted to have, right? Obviously, like obviously, I just need to connect it over here. Let's scale this down a bit, just in case. So let's say this is our urban setup, or this is our setup to create kind of a kind of a system. So I will group this as well and then copy this and put it over here and let's say plots. But obviously this is um, 
highly relying on our X and Y count. So if I pull out this as 20, let's say, or if you go 100, you started. And if I increase this, you see that I will having this information goes up and down by using the grid. Okay. And yeah, that is what I can do is I can add this demand to the group and connect it over here so that I can increase. So what I'm seeing here is this basically, and obviously if you come over here and if you turn this on, clear this on, and if you push this back a bit, you see that they come closer, they come closer, and now they're overlapping, which we don't want. So like, let's leave it as it is for now, but you can make all these arrangements and you can always go back here and increase this scale as well. Or what you can do, you can copy and paste this, add this to group and increase the Y size or decrease the Y size or increase the X size. It is again, like completely, completely up to you. But let's stick to uh, sort of a square based information here and I can preview this point so the question that we will going to have here is like what would happen if we have an attractor curve as a as a road or as a canal or as a walking path and how it would work so what we want to do is basically we want to have this have this all like all these rectangles again we can squeeze this size a bit if you want to but this is good for now and what we can do is we can go to curve and under util we can grab pull curve oh sorry pull geometry this is i think it's supposed to be uh sorry pull point it's supposed to be under vector point yes pull point so the area of this each point like all these points and the curve let me put this curve in this component grabs the closest points and the distances so these distances can be used to create our uh, first very first uh, information we can plot very very first information on top of this uh, rectangle so let's put another curve here and then grab an attractor I'm uh, sorry scribble and put tractor curve and this one is quite important therefore we can add this group as and we can check change the color of this group maybe even more translucent it's not that opaque by now. Yeah, now it's good red. So what we see here is the distances, right? And what we can do is if we round this, 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 this. Or we can say, okay, we have all these rectangles onto the air onto these points. The area of these rectangles, we can tag this. Okay, as our text. You see, so if I change this, it changes. If I push this down, you see the numbers are changing. This means I have created my system and everything again is quite like parametrically. And when I add a set of rectangles here, they change when I set a rectangle, set of rectangles change and obviously if I like uh, scale this down to I don't know like something like this it goes down but this time obviously I need to uh, scale this on 1D maybe just to avoid the overlaps but you you got the drill i assume okay 
So these are, this is, at all PC, if we add another curve here, and if we pull this in, you see, it gets the closest one to itself. So basically we can create, we can use this multiple curves, multiple attractors here. And in the next video, what I'll be talking about, how we can use this information, but with a singular one, obviously, how we can use that information to first create kind of our rotations and sort of sizes in our urban plot.